everybody, I'm Dominic from XPDIY.com. In this video, the long-awaited and many requests for it is how to install a sub-panel. The very first thing about a sub-panel, and there's really two different aspects of a sub-panel, is why do you need it and where is it going to go? In our situation, our sub-panel is going to go right next to our main panel, and it's going to supply a finished basement. First thing, what size do you need? How many circuits are you going to need is very important. And basically, we're going to have six circuits, so we have a relatively small cell panel. Our breaker, that is for our existing panel that our wire is going to connect to going to the cell panel. And our two Romex connectors, a extra ground bus bar, and of course, the proper size wire. Okay, now we're back to our main panel. The first thing we want to do before we Remove the cover is obviously open it up and turn the main breaker off. Now this one's going up and down. Yours can be very different or even somewhere in between. But make sure you turn the power off. The first thing with electric electrical is make sure the power is off. So go ahead and turn this off and then we'll remove this cover. I went ahead and mounted our sub panel, and I mounted it at a decent height. And one of the heights you want to do is, you know, center, you know, so you can see everything. You don't want to weigh up here and all that. There are requirements on that for your town and so forth. Now, one thing I want to show you here is our existing panel. Now, if you look here, this is our ground bus bar. This is all our grounds going. You can see the bare wire, and this is all our neutrals. But they are tied together. You see this bar going across. They are connected. But one real important thing here. See that green screw right there? Well, the inspector, when they came to inspect this, everything looks nice and pretty and everything. But he, the first thing he does is look for that screw, and that screw must be in. What that screw is doing is bonding the casing to our grounds and our neutrals right here. So it's real important that that's in. The only reason why I'm showing you that, because on our sub-panel, we have our same screw here. Now, this is our neutral bus bar. And this green screw is also bonding the casing, just like this one here. But the difference is on a sub-panel, all these need to be isolated separately. So this green screw needs to come out, real important by code. But also, uh, being that this is going to be our neutral bus bar, we have to install an additional uh, ground bar, which is actually, you see these little holes there that came from the factory, and this mounts perfectly right in there. So we're going to isolate our grounds to our neutrals and, of course, our uh, two hots from our face. Okay, our ground bus bar is mounted nice and strong into our sub-panel. We removed our green uh, grounding, our bonding screw here. Now, the next thing you want to do is locate where that you're going to want to install your, your, main, your main breaker to your sub-panel. Now, it's relatively important. Now, a lot of times, say you're doing this panel because you don't have enough room. Well, you know, obviously, you want to start removing some of those breakers and to position them. Just be careful when you pull them out uh, that you're not going to take them from this side and then think you're going to push it back over here. Try to take the ones on this side so it's a lot easier to get back over to your sub-panel if that's the situation you're in. But either way, where your, your, main, your breaker is, now I actually have, you know, lots of room in here. So I can go ahead and put this breaker where it's going to go here. Um, now, our wire we have is a 50 amp wire. It's a pretty heavy wire. So we want to watch where we're going to be able to bring it in from. Now up here, that's pretty, uh, pretty jammed up with space there. And it's a bigger knockout. I mean, it's a three quarter, not your typical half inch like the other ones. So we're actually going to look around. So right here on the side, I have, I have a big one here I can use. And in our uh, panel here, um, looks like I'm going to have to come through the top for that one. It doesn't look like I can come through the bottom there. Uh, so now our wire is going to run, obviously, from here up and around and all the way down and through the side. And, of course, you need just a little wire here, not much at all. Uh, it's real important to really consider how you're going to be running the wire and all that because wire is not cheap and you cut it too short, now you've got a problem. So it's always best to plan this ahead of time. One of the things I wanted to show you is how to remove the covering off the wire. You would think that, eh, no problem, it's easy. You see, I went and already did this one here, but on 
this one, well, I see a lot of people make the mistake, even uh, so-called electricians, they can use a nice sharp knife, which you really have to, um, but they come down here. And they start doing it from down here. Um, you don't want to do that. You just don't. There's another way around it. And, but the reason why you don't want to do it, sharp knife. I mean, how many times have you actually cut yourself, right? Blood all over the place. Who wants that? You don't want to puncture the wire. Right here, I don't care. Because I know that I'm going to cut this short. So I don't care if I go through it. Um, but down here, that's where you want to be a little careful. But just a quick way, just you know, put a little slice in the wire. Maybe even the longer one I just did. Like that, so you can see the carbon comes off. Now, you know, as long as you do it right and pull it right, grab the wire and grab this, and then just pull hard and separate it. And look at that, like that, and then back down. Look at that. See, so now I know that my sharp knife did not touch this wire, did not come in contact with it, and there's no reason to do it again. I mean, maybe just a little hole, but uh, I mean. Honestly, folks, this is going to be 220 volt. You really want to play around with that? Now, we got our wires stripped and nice and long. Now, we kind of like how to start putting these things back in this panel where it goes. Now, our neutral, our white wire, our neutral, we want to keep it on our neutral bus bar to the right here. So, one of the things, we want to look for an empty spot, which I went and did already. And I know that we have one or have one right down here on the bottom. All right, so I want to just grab the wire. And we just don't want to get the wire and say, poof, and tighten your screw. It looks like poopy. We want to make a nice clean, like you look at the rest of this panel. It's all nice and clean. We want to keep it that way. Bring the wire, bend it. Put your, put your hand like that, you know, where the screw is right there. And bend that again. So we kind of get a general idea. Uh, now I need to cut this wire like that and then put that in. Our ground wire, you want to do the same thing. Now, again, we left it long you know, for the whole length, so I have that room to put it wherever I want, and I'm actually going to end up putting it on this one right here, and our two power wires, our red and our black, are going to go to our new 50 amp breaker right here. Uh, again, one thing we don't want to do, I and mean, you really can prevent it, don't just have it go like that. Uh, you know, I like to leave a little loop in it. Uh, in case I need to move it at all, so you want to do that because if you decide, uh oh, something I shouldn't have put it there, well, now you're really going to um, you get start replacing a whole wire that you just ran to wherever it may be. All right, so let me go ahead and, and cut these and mount these. Okay, everything's all wired to our, our existing panel, to our 50 amp breaker that we put in. Again, yours can be whatever amperage that you're looking for. In this case, we're just doing 50. Our wire, our white wire, our neutral is connected to our neutral bus bar on this side here. Our ground wire, like I showed you earlier, is connected uh, somewhere in here. Game flying now, so many wires in there, uh, which is our ground bus bar. And that four wires is kind of coming right up and over into our sub panel. Our, our neutral wire, our white wire, connected to our neutral bus bar. Our green screw, which is bonding uh, the neutral and the grounds to our casing, that has been removed. Very important. And we have our two hot leads coming in and supplying both sides of our sub panel with the power and of course our new ground bus bar is connected to our ground wire which is coming all the way in here and of course that ground wire is going to feed uh, through the heavier ground which is a six gauge wire which is actually going to a grounding rod and it's one thing I want to explain to you being that for one it's a short run and it's inside we don't have to run another uh, ground wire which would be a six wire for uh, out to a grounding rod outside buried eight feet. However, and very important, if you were putting this panel, many of you might be doing that, if you were to put this panel in a detached building, either be a garage, a pool shed, or whatever, then yes, you're gonna need to put a number six wire in here, run back outside down to a grounding rod, buried eight feet into the ground. But in this situation, no, it's not necessary. It's not code for our situation. So now what I'm going to do is just we're going to put our cover back on our existing panel. We're still going to keep our, our uh, breaker supplying our panel off, our sub-panel off, but we're turning the main panel uh, back on. Um, now, in this video, is just to show you 
how to do the sub panel, the wiring and everything. What I have here is just a, uh, a 15 amp breaker. Uh, and then you can start uh, doing, oh, hello, you can start uh, wiring uh, all your, your branch circuits onto here. So again, uh, your hot lead will now connect it to your breaker here. Your grounds are going to go here and your neutrals would go here. And, you know, you do your knockouts and put your cover on. And that's it. And a whole complete sub-panel, completely done and nice, neat. So I can put these covers on and we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right. You see all our covers are back on. Our covers are back on for our sub-panel that we put in. In our situation, we didn't put any breakers in, so we didn't take any of these knockouts here. Uh, but it is all wired, all good, all ready for our future use. Our main breaker is back on, and uh, this is our breaker, our 50 amp that we put in, which because we had to knock out our little tabs here to make a room for that. One important thing you want to do, uh, and most panels come with these little stickers that tell you um, what things are. This one's just not that great of condition, actually. Um, you know what, what breaker this is now, but you're not going to remember it tomorrow or even next year. Uh, on here is a little uh, label said sub feed. So I just want to just put that next to our uh, breaker here that we put in sub feed. So it's labeled. I always know that that's the sub feed feeding our, uh, our sub panel. And that is it. 100% complete, ready to go. Now you can turn that breaker on or off. It doesn't really matter. I would leave it off uh, just because you don't need it but in our situation because nothing's connected. Nothing there to connect. All right, everybody, well, 100% completed. The video that everybody's asked me for for, I guess, a couple years now, how to install a sub-panel. Done, completed. Anyway, I hope you learned how to do it. I hope you were safe. I hope you didn't knock your eyeballs out of your head too far by getting shocked. And you did listen to me by taking that switch, that main breaker off. Anyway, I'm Dominic from DIY.com. Thanks for watching.